Welcome back to Becoming Supernatural, Chapter 3, Part 2. When you make a decision, that the word decision, the root word is, there are Latin words, de, which is of, and then sidre, which is the Greek word for to cut. And so when you make a decision, you're making, you're cutting a line in your current timeline. And as you cut a line, which distinguishes you from the present now, from your past, and as you cut that line, you leave the past behind, and now you're forwarding into a different timeline. And as you do that, one of the things that I had revealed to me back in 2013, 2013 was a year where I was having a lot of transformation, a lot of big life changes, it was the year that I, you know, I chose to file for divorce. And so a lot of things happened that year. And one of the visions that I saw, which really took me by surprise because I was just, you know, doing my own contemplative meditation and talking to God and doing my own thing as I usually do. And, and then all of a sudden I had this revelation about decisions. And so what I saw was that in order to get unstuck, you have to make a decision. And what was revealed to me or what I, I saw was that when I made a decision that a line was cut in the sand. And with that, there's like this lightning bolt of fire and energy that literally cuts a line. And there's an incredible amount of power that is released when you make a decision. And that that energy is the energy that now catapults you and rises. It's like a wind beneath your wings. It is an energy that, that lances you or launches you like a rocket ship to move forward in that new direction of whatever it is that you're choosing. When I saw that, that was, I'm like, wow, my whole life I've, I've you know, I'm familiar with the word decision, but to see it so vividly like that was, it, it really took me aback. You know, that was a life-changing moment for me when I, when I saw that vision and I saw that there's so much power behind our decisions. Even the decision to not make a decision is a decision. It's a decision to stay stuck. So you're in that timeline. And so you have a lot of power that is giving you resistance because you're not choosing to go in one direction or the other. So by your deciding, even if you make, which I now have le I've learned over the last 10 years that there's no such thing as making a wrong choice or making a wrong move. Any decision that you make, when, when the truth of the matter is that you are going to move forward in life, you know, there are, there's an infinite number of ways that you can get to the finish line. And the finish line isn't the ultimate finish line because really we are spiritual bodies having a physical experience with this with this meat suit right and so the first finish line if you will from this moment that i'm talking to you is really the finish line of death because that is we're talking right now i'm my goal is to help you you know just to empower you so that things that I've learned of anything, if only one tiny little thing is of benefit to you and it you know, helps to relieve some of your suffering, it relieves some of your pain, relieves some of your nervousness, your angst. If you are able to um, walk away with one, one bit of information that you can implement that will then help you move forward, then, then I've done my job. Uh, I've always said that years ago, my personal mission statement which encompassed business and personal life was to facilitate, educate, encourage, and empower you know, the people that I serve, the people that are around me. And when I made that mission statement, that was not limited to my, you know, my friends and family, but that also was extended out to the brokers and the agents and the lenders that worked for me and my companies, and also to people in society that I knew. So it was really to facilitate, educate, encourage, and empower people what I call the F triple E formula. And what I have learned is that, you know, you look at your, your life as a series of steps and nobody makes a straight line from birth straight to, you know, being successful and, you know, being this shiny object that looks good and looks all put together. It doesn't happen. You know, we all have to zigzag our way to wherever it is that we're going. 
And you know that zigzagging, uh, sometimes uncomfortable, sometimes painful, sometimes nerve wracking, uh, sometimes that zigzagging makes us do some really deep soul searching, but it's necessary. Casey Neistat talks about how you, it's like the Tarzan myth, and he says that it's like you swinging from one tree branch, you know, and then you swing to another, and you swing to another, and you swing to another. And I think that's a great analogy too. But the truth of the matter is that as we move in this life journey, there's an infinite number of possibilities for us to fulfill ourselves and live our life purpose and really listen to the murmurings of our heart, of that heart brain that we've been talking about. And um, the reality is that there's no such thing as a wrong decision because the universe is going to make sure that certain things are taken care of for your benefit and for your protection. And so as long as you're doing it, I think with a, with a pure heart, with a, a good intention, your intention is not to hurt and harm other people. I think that you know, you're going to ultimately get to where you're gonna go. You have a multitude of ways to get there and some ways are gonna be easier than others. And I think the more you pay attention to your heart and you go with the flow instead of trying to make things happen, and trust me, I was the poster child. Holy cow, major A personality type, you know, not only A, B, C, D, E, F, G list, you know, I had A, one through like 20 or 30, B, one through, you know, everything was ranked, categorized, and you should have seen my to-do list the way they used to be. And I learned, I wanna say thereabouts between 2010 and 2013, I started to, you know, during the mid middle of the mortgage crisis, as I was juggling, I was juggling a lot. And knock on wood, financially I did fine, but there was obviously a lot of stress. You know, I was raising three kids. I had all my agents that were working for me. So many people were losing their homes. Some of my agents were losing their homes, lost their homes to foreclosure and, or had to short sell them. And, and you know, it was a very trying time. But what I learned is that there's a way to drop into the ebb and flow of the universe. So that instead of you trying to make everything happen, that now you are in this energetic flow. And in, in Christianese and the Judeo-Christian belief system, it's we, the, the way it's languaged is you are going to get into the flow of the Holy Spirit. So you wanna get into the flow with the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter what the label is, it's all energy, it's all the exact same thing. So whether you want to get into the flow with the Holy Spirit, if you want to get into the flow with the Great Spirit, the bottom line is that there is an ebb and flow to the universe. And if you pay attention to nature, you see that a flower doesn't have to toil, doesn't have to work hard to get sun. It doesn't have to work hard to get water to get nourishment. The grass does not have to toil. It doesn't have to work hard. It doesn't have to do a to-do list because it's in the ebb and flow. Trees, the same thing. It's, it, they're naturally in the ebb and flow of the universe. And so what happened for me, and it really, when I started to, I mean, I want to say it was back in 2000, well, in 1999, I was starting to get a notion of this, but I guess I'm outing myself that I'm a slow learner. Because <laughs> in 1999, I was on this executive board, true story, I was on this executive board, the founding executive board for Eagle Ridge Camps and Conference Centers. And it's the largest acquisition of land in the history of California for the past 50 years. It was land that was acquired by this surgeon and he was dedicating it for kids to have a youth camp to go to. And so, one of the things that I was first being convicted of was to be in this flow of the Holy Spirit. And I saw supernatural things, things that you guys, if I told you about them right now, you wouldn't believe, believe them to me. <laughs> believe them to me? Boy, that's not even proper English. <laughs> Anyhow, again, more evidence to you, you don't have to be perfect, it's all good. And the more self-effacing you are, and the more you can laugh at yourself, I think the better. At the very least, you crack yourself up and you create your own endorphins. So back to what happened in 1999. So November 1st of 1999, I 
became a founding member of the executive board for Eagle Bridge Camps and Conference Center. And so we started to, we became very sensitive to this ebb and flow of, of the universe because an incredible amount of um, supernatural things were happening at that time. So fast for all sorts of things that, you know, which we don't have time to get into right now. So I'm gonna zip line us all the way to 2013. You know, there are certain things in my life that were working fabulously, and then there are other things in my life. And I think this is true for everybody, but I know, I know enough people where the, like the majority of their lives, like everything is in this great ebb and flow and you see things manifesting for them. And they have this, you know, I've always been a joyous person, so I've always had a consistent joy, but yeah, there's areas of frustration and so forth. I really, brought up to be a really hard worker. My, you know, my parents both, you know, you know, the daughter of a preacher and a teacher. Father also was a successful entrepreneur where he was able to acquire, he was smart in the 60s. He started investing in stocks and started investing in real estate. And so he had his acquisitions and so forth. Long story short, I started realizing it's hard work can only take you so far. Yes, there is merit in hard work, but Knowledge is power, applied knowledge is powerful. But when you take applied knowledge and you marry it with having a heart and brain coherence, and now you are paying attention to your heart brain and you are taking inspired action instead of working your yourself to the bone. One of the philosophies that I had was it's like, you know, I'm, you know, I know that I have a certain level of intelligence and, you know, that I'm, I'm, my IQ is here and whatnot, and none of that really matters, you know, in the world, you know, once you get out there and you're working and so forth, you know, who cares? But I knew that, okay, anything I don't know, I know exactly where to go to find out. No one will outwork me. I'm a hard worker. I'm very industrious. I'm extremely resourceful and I'm ultra mega connected. It's like, I'm pretty much you know, I used to think for a long time in my career that I was six degrees of separation from anyone between myself and let's say, I don't know, the Queen of England and the President of the United States, quite literally, to realizing in 2013, oh my gosh, I thought I was six degrees of separation. And then I realized, wow, it's, I'm realizing there's only, there's only myself, one other person. And then I'm, you know, in direct contact with, let's say the President of the United States or Her Majesty. And then in 2013, it became more abundantly clear that I was only one degree of separation, but I was in this place of energetic flow. When I decided that I was just going to surrender, now, I wish I could tell you that I let go and surrendered, and I've been 100% of time of the time in this ebb and flow since 2013. That's not true. Like anything else, it's a, it's a muscle, you have to develop it, you have to cultivate it. And so there are times that I was really good at it, and then there were times that I fell off the horse, and then I realized, oh, I'm back into my old self trying to make things happen again, and it's like, I gotta let go. But I had some, it was like a flurry of things that happened that I was like, this is incredible. There's no amount of hard work. It's kind of like, have you ever seen when you have a fly that gets in between your glass and the outside and it is working as hard as it possibly can it's flying and flying and flying uh, pushing up against the glass but there isn't any amount of hard work that's going to get that fly to get to go through that glass and that's sometimes how i felt i was where it's like okay i see this clear glass yeah, I want to get to the outside. And so I'm pushing up, up against this glass wall. Isn't that interesting? It's a figure of speech, but that's often how we feel. And so you know, and I know that there isn't any amount of work. It doesn't matter how long that fly pushes against that glass wall. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how powerful. So length of time and the amount of power that that fly puts into getting through that glass, it's never going to make it through. It will die before it succeeds going through that glass. But if instead it turns around and realizes, it's like, 
there's a glass wall here, I can't get through and it's like, wow, I'm muscling my way through and I'm spending a lot of time and energy. This isn't working. If the fly would then do a 180 and turn in the opposite direction, it would realize, wow, maybe there's another way. And okay, I can't get through here. There's a glass wall here. But wow, look at there's all this space here. I have freedom to go everywhere. Oh my gosh, there's an open door. Boom, and out they are. In recognition of that, I almost kind of by default, some way, somehow, got into this energetic flow and then magical things, one thing after the other. And as my friends and I, you know, my best friend and my closest friends were here, they're like, how did this happen? And oh my gosh, how did this happen? And how did how did you do that? And how did you get this group of people? And how did you get that guest on your show? And, and it was just one thing. And then there were things that I wasn't, they were not on my wish list. They weren't on my to-do list. They weren't on my radar. And things started coming to me that made no sense. Yes, I have a history and great business background. Yes, I have great education. You know, I went to USC. Uh, big deal. You know how many, 30,000 students a year go to USC. So it's like belly buttons. In Southern California, everybody went to USC, in my opinion. Although not everybody would say that here. But realistically, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very well-respected university, you know, and our rival is Notre Dame and, you know, Stanford and blah, 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 blah. But all that to say that none of that was really part, part of the mix. It wasn't until I let go and I was willing to get into that energetic flow. And yes, I was meditating. I was already a meditator at the time. And so it was in that quietness, mostly, you know, sometimes I, I made it a habit to go out to the beach during the day. And even if it was just for 15 minutes, I would, you know, walk on the sand because I've always been drawn to the water. And that's where I've had the greatest sense of peace as I, there's something just so magnanimous and majestic about the ocean to me. And like I said, I really do feel like I, I receive a certain type of nourishment and energy and it's a je ne sais quoi, as they say in French, that I receive just from being there and the air and just how it appeals to all my senses. And you know, things are revealed there because I don't go there looking to say, okay, here's my, here's my ask list. I'm not, you know, connecting to God and to the divine saying, here's my ask list. You know, there are times where there are specific things that, yeah, I do need help with. And it's like, okay, help. But then the majority of the time I tried to the best of my capability and my humanity to just say, I'm just here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all my blessings, even in the midst of difficult situations or or maybe perplexing or confusing situations or situations where I was like just dumbfounded and going well rather than react I have no idea how to deal with this so I just hit the pause button and so I'm not going to react I'm just going to seek you know the great I am and I'm just going to say thank you for everything in the past the present future you know thank you for this time that we have together Thank you for the feeling of the, the, the beach air on my skin. Sometimes you feel the, the ocean spray on your skin. So, and uh, sometimes the birds come hover and they, you know, they'll start circling above my head. And it's like, oh, I just love the sound of not only their chirping, but also the, their wings as it, they flutter in the air. And then sometimes they land around me. And the feeling of the sand under my feet and just that whole paying attention. I didn't realize it for a long time, but that is actually a meditation, just paying attention to what you're hearing, paying attention to how your eyes feel, what you're seeing. You're seeing things with different eyes. The smells that are around you, especially, you know, when you're at the beach, you have that awesome ocean smell. It's a marine, you know, type, very unique, distinct odor. Even because you smell that, it even affects your taste buds. So as you're in that place and you're just, oh, and the sun's beating on your face and that feels really good too, you know, that is a meditation. That's, if you do the body parts meditation that Dr. Joe has, you'll recognize 
that it has the same elements of awareness because what you're doing is you're being bringing an awareness to your body parts and to your senses so anyhow it's in that state that then certain things were revealed to me and i thought oh okay and it's now now looking back you know you can always connect the dots you know hindsight's 20 20 they say so okay looking back it's like oh so now what's become abundantly clear just in the last couple months i mean 2019 has been like i keep on saying it was the year of magic i'm sure 2020 is going to go down as a year of magic too but um but i think 2020 has more to do with your having things be 2020 in terms of your eyesight and your inner vision because we all have an inner mission and our inner vision has to be crystal clear and i and i really do believe that that's what this year is all about but as you are in a state of gratitude and appreciation for what it is that you have as you come into that place of quiet where you are you're the true you you are um, embracing the love soul that you are and then you are just in gratitude that's where it seems like the greatest number of downloads of knowledge of answers of insights of aha start to come to you and i've had people ask me it's like well you know how can i create that elevated emotion of feeling gratitude and appreciation if you know yeah i'm grateful for some things but how do i really elevate it so i have a genuine feeling of gratitude and i would say you're going to have to go back to a past memory in your history of something that you were truly excited and genuinely in gratitude for if you can't find that place of authenticity in your now which i think you should be if you're overall healthy if you're free yeah we've got this pandemic this quarantine but you have a good roof over your head you know yeah everybody's got problems some people are like i have they haven't worked in two months they have all sorts of different things but but the reality is there's things can always be infinitely better and they can also be infinitely worse and there are people out there who have it infinitely worse than you and there are people who have it infinitely better than you and in order to make yourself move up the scale where things are infinitely better you have to get into gratitude so if you have to go back to your childhood and maybe think of the day that you went to Disneyland and how joyous and excited you were and how much fun you had and how much appreciation and gratitude you had for your parents or your aunt or uncle who took you if that's what it takes then embrace that relive that make believe that in your head again do whatever it takes that is the doorway to receive that insight and those downloads okay so we're going to keep on going chapter 13 there's not that much more we'll finish up chapter 13 and then we'll only have one chapter left after this the greater energy you can create through the elevated emotions of the heart the more you're going to connect with the unified field which means you're going to experience more wholeness connection and oneness but you can't experience that connection when you're feeling incoherent feeling separate or living by the hormones of stress when the chemicals released during stress arouse the brain we feel disconnected from the unified field and we tend to make less evolved choices so we know without a doubt that the emotions of competition fear anger unworthiness guilt and shame keep us separate from one another because they produce slower and lower frequencies than elevated emotions like love gratitude care and kindness which produce faster and higher frequencies so we also know that the faster the frequency the more energy is present so this prompted us to ask several questions what if we assembled a community of several hundred people in one room had them open their hearts and generated elevated emotions and energetic states and then asked them to send the intention for the greatest good of a select group of people gathered in the same room what would happen if 
the electromagnetic field around each person's body merged with the field of the person sitting next to them. Could those elevated emotional states then begin to produce a change in energy in the room? Is it possible that everybody experiencing elevated emotions and energy could begin to create coherence within a community? I can personally attest to this being a huge yes. Pause here because when we are in the monastery that Dr. Joe conducts, there's a thousand of us mystics that are all we're all getting into that heart and brain coherent state the energy in the room is incredible it is palpable it is the most extraordinary feeling of unconditional love that you will feel outside of actually being in a meditation where you just go where you go quantum because when you're in the quantum you just feel this incredible just when you don't think you can feel any more love you feel somehow i don't know how it's possible but it is and so the answer to this is yeah absolutely positively certifiably undeniably yes so building a collective coherent field you can do it so since early 2013 we've partnered with our friends at the heart math institute to further our research and since we began measuring our students physiological states We've scanned thousands of brains and hearts, resulting in a significant amount of information. And we have been overwhelmed and mystified by some of the data we've collected when common people start doing uncommon things. Over the course of this journey, in collaboration with the HeartMath Institute, we've witnessed amazing measurements in our students. We've taken equally amazing measurements of the collective energy in our rooms where our students have gathered measurements that show consistent daily increases in energy using a sophisticated sensor from Russia called the Sputnik. And that was mentioned briefly in chapter two. So since elevated emotions related to the activity of autonomic nervous system produce electromagnetic fields, increase, increasing those emotions results in changes in blood microcirculation perspiration, and other functions of the body. So because Sputnik is so sensitive, it can quantify environmental fluctuations by measuring barometric shifts, relative humidity, air temperature, electromagnetic fields, and more. So take a look at graphics 15A and 15B in the color insert in your book. In these measurements from our workshops, you can see a trend that demonstrates an increase in the collective energy of the room. The first line in red is our baseline measurement and shows the room's energy before the start of the event. As you look at the red, blue, green, and finally the brown lines, each color representing a different day, you can see that each day the energy steadily increases. So in graphics 15C and 15D, the same color scale applies. However, these measurements reflect specific time intervals during each day's morning meditations. So this means our students are getting better at raising the energy of the room by creating more unified coherence. So the Sputnik readings demonstrate that the collective energy created by our students from the first day of the workshop to the final day consistently makes incremental increases so within that trend, we found that most groups are extremely focused and the energy rises every day. About one quarter of the time, the energy stays relatively the same for the first day or two. But in the following days, the energy increases significantly. So we believe this is because during the first day or two, the group is working on overcoming themselves by breaking the energetic emotional bonds that keep them connected to their past present reality. So during this time, they are drawing from the unified field to build their own personal electromagnetic fields. So this siphoning from the field tends to cause the collective energy in the room to drop. But once those individual fields become greater and more enhanced and more coherent, they entrain 
to one another, which is when we see dramatic increases in the energy of the room. I'm gonna pause right here. I think that's why if you look at a lot of the ancient texts, and um, I know that in the Christian Bible, Christian, Catholic, and um, Jewish Bible, in the Old Testament, it talks about how where two or more are gathered, that basically God's basically there. I mean, the truth of the matter is that you are one with God, God is one with you. So whenever you choose to cultivate the relationship with yourself and choose to put all the social media down, your cell phone, all the exterior noise that's coming out, all that information that's all keeping your brain occupied so that the mind is now chewing. You know, the brain is using your mind to chew on all this information. And some of it is programming. Some of it is hypnotizing you. Some of it is programming you to believe whatever the agenda of, you know, whatever the media is, you know, whatever, especially if they're commercials and ads, because somebody wanting to sell you something, they're trying to program you to show you that you have a lack or a void creating a need so that then they can provide a solution so that they can sell it to you. So when you walk away from all of that and you just decide to be with yourself, whether it's in your room, on your balcony, on the step outside your home, on your boat deck, on the beach, at the park, on the grass, in your yard, whatever spot you choose, and you just aren't thinking, you're just quieting your mind, quieting yourself, stopping all those thoughts, sensing your different body parts. You're just grateful that you have 10 fingers, 10 toes, two hands, two feet, two legs, two arms. You have, um, you have your whole entire body, your, you know, your skin's in good condition. You're, you know, you're just, you're just present. It's there in that space where you're becoming one with yourself and you're fine with yourself and you are choosing to bring the elevated emotion of love. And you're like, okay, heart, you know, yeah, I want to bring that energy up to my heart. I want to open my heart. I want to expand the love. I want to feel that love. Pay attention to whatever it is that your heart's trying to tell you. Bring that energy up all the way up to your brain so that your heart and your brain are connected and that your brain has now the benefit of the intelligence of your heart. And then just be one with that and then just see what happens with no expectations, no agenda, no striving and thriving, you know, no working yourself to make something happen, just allowing. That's part of getting into that energetic flow. We are on page 53. So figure 13.2 shows that when two coherent waves come together, they create a bigger wave. So this is called constructive interference. The bigger the wave, the bigger the amplitude of energy. The Yes, so the bigger the wave, the higher the amplitude of energy. As a result of our students' more coherent waves, coming together during our workshops, the energy of the group field increases, and then there's more energy to heal and to create or access greater levels of mind, which can sometimes lead to mystical experiences. So I'm gonna, I haven't been showing you any of the diagrams and so forth here, but you're going to see, so you see you have this coherence constructive interference and you see that the amplitude the the uh, power it's a far greater energy so what happens and dr bruce lipton talks about this in his book called the honeymoon effect when he when he's talking about the six noble gases if, if you look at the periodic table of element on the right hand side you'll see the six noble gases you know like argon neon etc they're on the right hand side so when you have a noble gas you have two noble gases who decide to come together as opposed to all the other elements in the periodic table 
of elements. The all what relationship that has to you is that this is the general public. Most people in the general public are codependent. They're not acting. They're not knowing. They're not behaving. You're not being noble gases. Everybody has the potential to be a noble gas. But if you are codependent, where instead of reaching inside for your source of energy, if instead of reaching inside for love, that love that you have in your heart, that falling in love feeling, that that feeling state is inside you. It's not just there when you fall in love with, a, with another human being. If you're looking for another human being to give you that, that's your clue that you're codependent and you need to rewire yourself. I mean, it's your choice. You can continue to live that way. If, if that's your thing and you're cool with it, then go ahead. But what I have found and what I have learned that it's far better is to be like a noble gas. And instead of reaching outside to create that feeling of joy, to create that feeling of happiness, to create that amazing feeling of just peace and serenity, even in the midst of bad things happening around you, you can still hold that place of peace. And the reason is because you know that when you go into that place of peace, anything that's unwanted on the outside you can change it. You have the ability to mold those energy waves by going in, going inside and slowing your heart rate, slowing your breath, slowing your brain waves. Now you go into 5D. Once you have your heart and your brain coherence, you're going to add the elevated emotion to whatever it is that you want. You're envisioning it. And now you have that attitude of gratitude of appreciation and you're in the elevated emotions of love and going yes 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 and you've already seen it in the motion picture screen of your mind and you know that the order has been put in and then you let it go and that's why even in the midst of all the muck and guck it doesn't matter because you know that you put the order in and now it's just a matter of time before it pops into your 3d reality and so that's how you behave as a noble gas, you can choose to be noble. Remember, there's 50 trillion DNA inside your body. And how do you command your autonomic nervous system to create one of 140,000 combination of proteins and chemicals to turn off or on? your genetic expression so that you optimize your body and that your body is in the optimal health. It's through this meditative process, plain and simple. That's what this entire book is about. And all of Dr. Joe's work is about that. So constructive interference, back to the book. Constructive interference is when two coherent waves come together to create a bigger wave. Amplitude is the measurement. Oh, I'm going to stop here for a second. I want to add a commentary. So one of the things that's inherent to the noble gases that's not inherent to the rest of the periodic table of elements is when you actually measure the power, the electromagnetic frequencies of all of the elements, one plus one is two. So when you add, so I'm going to use sodium and chloride because it's the easiest and everybody pretty much knows what sodium chloride is. So when you add sodium and chloride that are separate, but they're not noble gases, and now they're sharing that outer electron on their outer ring so that they're coming together, and now they're balanced, at least temporarily they're balanced. So now the power of each put together, it's doubled until they have heat, extreme cold, or pressure, which will break them apart again. No different than people, because we're made out of all of the elements from the periodic table, if you didn't know that, okay? Primarily, and actually we have a lot of carbon, hydrogen, ox oxygen. However, the noble gases, it doesn't matter, the heat, the cold, or the pressure, 
because they're stable, independent, unconditioned. They don't require conditions around them to be stable. So they're always stable. So now you get argon and radon and they come together. Now one plus one does not make two, my friend. One plus one makes 11 or 11 times 11. And the power is infinitely stronger. It's not one plus one is two. It's one plus one is 11 or 11 times 11. And that's why if you want to take this from a molecular elemental level and take it to two human beings, that's why sometimes you see uh, a couple where the guy is doing well, the gal is doing well, and they come together and, oh my gosh, if they were powerful independently, now they come together and it's not just a doubling of, of success for them. It is a, you know, multiple factor. It's a 10 times or more factor that they came together and they're like a power couple. It's like, it's like the king and the queen coming together, the emperor and the empress coming together because they were whole before they came together. It wasn't like the emperor rescued the, the empress or the, the queen rescued the king or any variation thereof. No, they were already, they wouldn't be an emperor. They wouldn't be an empress or king or queen. They wouldn't, they had to have been solid and whole first before they come together in that union. And so you're like going, oh great, that's gonna take absolutely forever doesn't have to take forever. Remember what we talked about a little bit ago about a decision? You just have to decide first. And now you're on the journey to being, instead of codependent, you can be interdependent upon the inside. You are unconditionally happy. That doesn't mean that people aren't going to do things that you dislike or don't want it, that don't make you feel good. But that means that now you are equipped and you are empowered and you're not gonna get completely knocked off your rocker, knocked off your boat where you end up in the water, now you're drowning. No, you're like, okay, yeah, this is something unwanted. Okay, now that I recognize what's going on, this is what I need to do to take care of this. And then you recenter yourself and you're like, okay, now I'm gonna create what I want. And then you let go because you're not going to make anything happen anymore because that doesn't, it can work, but it's tiring. There comes a point where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired and it's just too much work and there's a much better way. Not only a much better way, but there's a more efficient way, a far more powerful way, and it's a more joyous, fun, exciting way. Doesn't that sound better than making it happen? I don't know about you, but this is my path now. Can't unring that bell, won't unring the bell. I'm not going back to that old way ever again. It's just, this, this is my path now. So, so again, amplitude is the measurement of the height of a wave. So constructive interference is when two coherent waves come together to create a bigger wave. And amplitude is a measurement of the height of a wave. So amplitude is top to bottom. And the higher the amplitude, the higher the energy. So the more power you have. So in looking at this graph or this image, the taller, like this has a lot less energy. This has a lot more energy. And the bigger the amplitude, the higher that wave is, the more power, the more energy is evidenced there, okay? So if a community of people are all gathered and are creating coherent electromagnetic fields when their energies interfere, it makes sense that the energy of the room will increase. So my team and I have been consistently humbled by our students' profound healings, their ability to increase and regulate elevated states and their reports of mystical experiences or acute insights into their lives as a result of learning how to regulate their brain waves, open their hearts and go into coherence. So some of these occurrences could be labeled as miracles, but we believe it's just part of the process of becoming supernatural. 
This led us to wonder if our students could affect the nervous system of others. And if so, what the implications of that would be? These questions would spark the birth of Project Coherence. I'm gonna pause here again. And that is something that has been going on every single day since this whole outbreak took place. We have a group of people who every single day, multiple times a day, we come together throughout the globe and we have implemented meditations on a daily basis. Some people, I haven't been doing five hours of meditation. There, I know people who have. I've done the most is four and a half, just a little shy of five hours of meditation. Okay, five hours is um, the most I've done. But I don't do that every day. I do on and off meditations throughout the day. So, and the thing is, you don't start there. You work your way up there. And you can start off with a 15 minute meditation. On a sidebar here, have you been affected by Go Love 20? Are you affected by Go Love 20? If you haven't been affected by Go Love 20 yet, if nobody has asked you that question, and if you don't know what it is, then the answer is no, you're not affected by Go Love 20. If you would like to be affected by Go Love 20, just put it in the comments below and I'll be sure to affect you by Go Love 20. And in fact, as of a couple of days ago, that mutated and now we have a mutation of Go Love 20 and that's You Inspire Me. And um, I'm sure if you Google it, if you go to YouTube and you Google Dr. Joe Dispenza, Go Love 20, he'll give you all the all the information in the lowdown on that. I don't want to side train, but it is related to this. All I will say is I will put in the description below a meditation that you can do for 15 minutes that will, um, I'll put a 15 and a 30 minute one so that you can do that every day and you can begin on this journey. If you haven't started yet, when would now be the time to get started? So Project Coherence. So in collaboration with the HeartMath Institute, we performed numerous experiments whereby we took a small random sampling of about 50 to 75 people at our advanced workshops and attached HRV, heart rate variability monitors, to their chests and placed them in front of a row of the room for three meditations over the course of 24 hours. So since HRV not only provides insight into the coherence of the heart, but it also gives us information about the brain and the emotions. We wanted to measure subjects HRV for a full 24 hours. So to start the meditation, everyone in the room placed their attention on their heart center and began breathing through this center slowly and deeply, as you learned to do in chapter seven. So next, they cultivated and sustained an elevated emotion for two to three minutes, broadening their heart's electromagnetic fields and moving from a state of selfishness to a state of selflessness. Then we had the collective of 550 to 1500 students broadcast that energy of their elevated emotions beyond their body into the space of the entire room. Next, we had them lay the intentional thought in that frequency for the greatest good of all. The students sitting in the front of the room wearing the HRV monitors, that their lives be enriched, their bodies be healed, and mystical experience would find them. So our goal was to measure the collective energy in the room and its potential non-local effect on the people wearing the HRV monitors. So could those elevated levels of energy and frequency in the form of love, gratitude, wholeness, and joy cause another person's heart to go into coherence, even if they were on the other side of the room? Our results confirmed our hypothesis, not only did the broadcast energy produce a coherent effect on the people wearing the HRV monitors, but each of their hearts went into coherence at the exact same time, in the exact same meditation, on the exact same day. And this was not a one-time occurrence. 
Isn't that phenomenal? I think it's extraordinary. So we repeatedly found consistent results across our events. So what does this mean? So our data supports the HeartMath Global Coherence Initiative's belief that an invisible field exists upon which information is communicated. This field links and influences all living systems as well as our collective human consciousness. Because of this field, information is communicated non-locally. It's communicated non-locally. It's what we were just talking about earlier. So it's non-locally between people at a subconscious level through the autonomic nervous system. So in other words, we are bound and connected by an invisible field of energy. And this energy field can affect everyone's behaviors, emotional states, and conscious and unconscious thoughts. Because all frequency carries information, the magnetic fields produce, produced in the hearts of the student body acted as carrier waves for this information. So if at our workshops, we can produce non-local effects on others, shouldn't our elevated heart-centered emotions be able to produce non-local effects on our children, partners, co-workers, or anyone, or anyone we have a relationship with or share a connection with? I'm gonna read that one more time, especially during this time in 2020, this is being recorded on May 7th, 2020. So we are still in the midst, midst of our quarantine and this global pandemic. Uh, just a couple of days ago, Italy had uh, the, the restriction to not being able to leave their homes. People are now able to go outside. So this is, I think, very important. So we are able to produce non-local effects on our children, our partners, our co-workers, or anyone we have a relationship or share a connection with. So if you look at figure 13.3, you notice 17 people going into heart coherence at the exact same time, on the exact same day, during the exact same meditation. All of these students who went into heart coherence were being entrained by the energy of others. So the students sending the energy embraced the intention for the greatest good of those people wearing the heart rate monitors. The results show that when we get out of our own way, we can become more mind and non-locally connect to one another. So again, the results show, here it is, it's, you have it in black and white here, the evidence. The results show that when we get out of our own way, we can become one mind and non-locally it doesn't matter where we are geographically we can connect to one another through that connection we can influence the autonomic nervous system of others so they will feel more balanced coherent and whole imagine what could happen if you had thousands of people all doing the same for the entire world. That's what Project Coherence meditations are all about. It's about embracing an elevated emotion of love and we are broadcasting it out, fanning it out, not only outside the cavity of our hearts inside our bodies, but the room that we're in, the, you know, all outside of our homes, all outside covering our city block, the entire city, the entire county, the entire state, the entire country, the entire continent, the entire globe, and then ultimately to the entire universe. That energy, because we are an electromagnetic grid where my electromagnetic frequency and my toroidal field that has now been fanned out, you know, feeling energy coming out of my hands, it's being fanned out and now it's connecting to that other energy. It's a greater energetic grid that has a holographic um, 5D um, connection. It's, you're plugged in to that now. And now 
you're expanding that message and that frequency. It's like a packet of information and it's affecting everything, everywhere, anyone, anywhere, and any place and any time. Make no mistakes, it is affecting you as well. It's affecting your past, your past, your present and your future. It's affecting anyone and everyone you've ever come in contact with, whether related or not. It's affecting all of your ancestry and your history as well. Through your healing on a quantum level, literally on a quantum level, you're, you're healing in a multiplicity of dimensions, of frequencies, frequencies and dimensions, okay? It's extremely powerful. And this is what the mystics have been talking about for thousands of years. And now we actually have tangible proof. I think it's so exciting. So make no mistakes. What you are, the path that you are on right now is an extremely powerful, powerful um, path. I don't know if you saw Star Wars. I don't remember what the, it was the Star Wars that came out in the last three or four years. And there's one where you have Luke Skywalker now as much older. He's, I don't know, I, I want to guess that he's maybe in his 70s. And there's a scene where, of course, you know, he's been training the younger Jedi, but there's a scene where he is, he's on a, a cliffside. That happens, I believe that's in Scotland, uh, is where that was shot. And he's sitting on a rock on a cliff and he's overlooking the incredible ocean and he's just sitting, you know, Indian style or the Lotus style, I guess you could say. And he's just owning out and he is projecting his energetic body in a different and a non-local place on a different front where he is now interfacing and confronting the enemy. So because he is a Jedi and his mind is so disciplined and because he is so strong in his heart and mind coherence, what he is able to do is to project his energetic his energetic body, the embodiment at a certain density of himself. And he is projecting himself in a different place where he's doing battle now with, with uh, his enemy. And as he is battling his enemy, his enemy is, it's like, <laughs> it's like that that fly that's against this glass wall, you know, they're using all of their energy, they're using all of their might, and they're fighting, you know, they're shooting off with their bazookas and their red laser beams, and they're just, you know, they're blowing up all sorts of, you know, stuff in nature and rocks and boulders and the ground, and there's explosions going everywhere. And, and then you see Obi-Wan Kenobi, completely unfazed, he keeps on walking towards them. And of course, he's like taking those guys down, left and right. And the enemy is going, how is this possible? He's like impenetrable. And he is fighting the enemy and nothing the enemy does. It doesn't matter, there's thousands of them and they're expending a brutal amount of force that normally, you know, you would take them out. But they don't know that they're dealing with his projection. They think that because to them, what their natural eyes are seeing, they see him. They see him in what appears to be his regular, they're not even thinking about density. They're just going off of, they're just operating in 3D. So they are limited by their vision because they're only operating from 3D. But Obi-Wan is operating in 5D. So he is sitting, doing the work. Make no mistakes, it takes energy to do this work. He is in that heart and brain coherence and he is really putting a lot of energy, really expanding. Oh, keeping, making sure that heart stays open. There's no place for fear here. He has courage. He is embracing love and he is broadcasting out that love 
on a quantum level. And so his adversary is fighting a losing battle. It's impossible for them to win because Obi-Wan has the energy of Quantiverse came out uh, in my last broadcast. I still haven't had a chance to Google that, but I don't know where that came from, but I'm gonna hold on to that because it seems appropriate here. So he has the energy from the Quantiverse that is now at his beck and call. And so that's why he wins. That is why, my friends, he wins. And that is why you can win. If you have an adversary that is nipping at your heels, eating away at you, that is threatening you, that is trying to do you harm, that is trying to belittle you, put you down, make you feel less than, any of those things, make no mistakes. You can change that situation. All you have to do is, I know I sound like a scratch record. It's a simple formula. Dr. Joe has outlined it so beautifully. Hit the pause button. Once you realize that you have an ad adversary, or it could be an enemy, or maybe it's a perceived enemy. Maybe it's not even really an enemy. Maybe it's the threat of an illness. Maybe it's a threat of uh, somebody in business who is um, maybe trying to shut your doors down because maybe they have a little bit more money than you do, or maybe they have a lot more money than you do. Maybe they have a lot more locations than, than you do. Uh, whatever that case is, you know what? You can go into 5D. I kid you not, the supernatural, <laughs> the quantum crazy. Now here's, that's another term I never heard of before, but the quantum crazy things can happen to your benefit. Why? Because until you give your focus and attention to that thing, you're dealing, yeah, there are the particles that are showing up in 3D to you, no, make no mistakes, but all you have to do is hit the pause button, go, oh, I see what's going on here. No, I'm not gonna react. I'm gonna slow my heart rate down. I'm gonna slow down my breath. I'm gonna slow my brain waves down. I'm gonna get into theta. I am going to open up my heart. I am going to broadcast the love energy out. I'm going to connect my heart and my brain. I'm going to have that elevated emotion. It's going to fuel my brain. I am going to, in fact, put the vision of what it is that I want. This is the outcome that I want. And I'm going to view it as if it all, it's going to be a rehearsal. It's like, I'm the producer, I'm the director, and I'm also the subjective actor. I'm the actor, I'm seeing myself in it, and I'm feeling it as if it's already happening. I'm having the conversation, evidencing that what I wanted already came to pass, and I'm rejoicing, and I'm ecstatic, and I am in appreciation and gratitude, which is the ultimate state of receivership. And then once I know that I know that it's done, it is done with every breath that I take, with every beat of my heart, with every step that I take. I let it go and then I know that the order is in and I know that it's going to manifest in 5D. From 5D it's going to manifest into 3D and that is how it's done. Through that connection we can influence the autonomic nervous system, that's what you're doing, of others and you are influencing the autonomic nervous system of others so they will feel more balanced, coherent, and whole. And imagine what you could have happen if you had thousands of people all doing the same for the entire world. The other thing I'm gonna say about this is that I remember I was, um, incredibly enough, I had the, uh, the blessing and the, the um, honor of being picked as being a healer and a healy. And as a healy, then you're the one who's in the middle and then you have a, this cage of eight people who are projecting the healing energy on you. And so I had that, that opportunity. But I gotta tell you that more powerful than that, it was far more powerful, far, far more mystical. It was, a, for me, it was a much more extraordinary experience to be a healer than it was to be a healy. 
yeah, it was great to have been healed of you know, insomnia, of some neck pain, of back pain, different things that were healed when I was there. But it was, to me, I could not wait to, you know, to be a healer. And that's, that just, I just thrived in that type of environment. It was such a powerful um, experience. And as a healer, you also receive healing as well. And that's something that happened to a lot of us who were in the, as we were, you know, doing the coherence healings, you know, you realize it's like, oh, wow, you know, you're putting all this love and all this attention on this person. You have no idea what they're, you know, sometimes you see that they're in a wheelchair, sometimes you see um, the corn contorted bodies and so forth. Um, but you don't know specifically as to exactly what the illness is that the person has or what the struggle is that they have. You know, um, some people have had, you know, horrible things that have really horrific things that have happened to them and um and yet oftentimes what will happen is like somebody will come out of that and they're like oh my god i had you know i was blind in my left eye now i can see through my left eye but they were a healer not a healy the energy goes wherever it has to go to heal and to optimize and it's the path of least resistance so so shortly after these global meditation events our students began sending us emails asking that since we showed that we could indeed create measurable change in the energy of a room where 550 to 1500 people were gathered, could we then produce the same effect on a global scale? So it was our students who requested we organize global meditations, giving birth to the project Coherence. So we broadcast our first project Coherence over Facebook on November 2015, with more than 6,000 people from all over the world joining together online to collectively create a more loving and peaceful world. So in our second meditation, more than 36,000 online viewers participated. And in our third global meditation, more than 43,000 joined forces. It is our intention to continue to host these Project Coherence events each time creating a stronger radiating influence of peace and love over the planet. So in time, we hope to measure these effects. So figure 13.3, this is a graph showing 17 people going into heart coherence all at the exact same time, on the exact same day, during the exact same meditation. The area between the vertical lines shows everyone going into heart coherence. So the next section is Project Coherence Meditation. Gosh, I would absolutely have loved to have been part of this Project Coherence over Facebook in November 2015. It doesn't matter, I'm part of it now, and so are you if you choose to be. So Project Coherence Meditation, for those of you who are wondering, I'm going to let you know that we are on page 353. It says page 353 of page 353. So it says page 353. Okay, so project coherence. Start by acknowledging your heart center. With focus and awareness, lock into that center. Open your focus and begin to become aware of the space that it occupies in space, as well as the space around the space your heart occupies in space. Then move as a thought and an awareness into the center of the earth and radiate your light beyond the earth in space. All I want you to do is raise your frequency and hold on to that emotion. So still, as a consciousness and as an awareness, slowly move away from the earth and then take the earth as a thought and place it in your heart. As you hold the entire planet in your heart, raise the frequency of the earth as a thought and broadcast that energy beyond your body in space. Radiate your love into the earth and expand a feeling of love. And that, my friends, concludes chapter 13. We're going to end it there now. And I'm thinking that perhaps what I will do is I will do, as you know, there are guided meditations just as the one that we just completed here. If you would like, 
uh, I'll record a couple meditations. There are going to be brief meditations based on doc Dr. Joe's works, his instructions. I'll put it to some uh, maybe Schumann resonance music because as you know from the previous cha chapters, he talked about the Schumann resonance and especially in this day and age of 5D and with the dissonance that we have going on, we have a lot of dissonance going on in the world, but make no mistakes, you can override whatever amount of dissonance is going on in your world by simply taking the measure to connect to your heart and do these meditations and become one with the one and become and start cultivating the most important relationship you'll ever have with any human being that you will have. Make no mistakes. The greatest friendship in the world that you need to cultivate is the relationship with you. Be your own heart's best friend first. Once you are your own best friend, then you can be a best friend to others. And you can become a better best friend, a better friend, a better son, a better daughter, a better neighbor, a better mother, a better father, a better son, daughter, I think I've said that already, a better acquaintance, a better business associate, a better boss, a better manager, a better human being. Uh, and the last thing I want to say to you guys is you see that I'm holding this particular position. This uh, traditionally has been thought of as a, as a religious um, position. However, one of the things that I learned in Tai Chi and also I learned this also in uh, Asian medicine uh, studies is that when you hold this position, you are actually activating the heart has a meridian line that goes through the body. So once you hold this position, you are activating the meridian line that your heart is located in, and it's actually a benefit to your heart's connectivity. So that is the benefit to this position. Uh, I just also want to call to your attention because we are talking about becoming supernatural and this is also, this is all energy work, okay? And so as you know, at the heart center, you have your thymus. So just doing three, three taps. In fact, you can do just three taps, but Donna Eden teaches three taps or having multiple taps. You can look up Donna Eden Energy Medicine on YouTube. She's now uh, partnered with Mind Valley, but she talks about tapping your thymus gland, which is right there in the middle of your breastbone. Just doing multiple taps will increase your energy. It benefits your heart. It benefits the energy levels in your body. These are little things that you can do that will help your body actually feel better. And then the third and the last thing that I'm going to leave you with, these things that I'm talking to you about, these are not things that Dr. Joe teaches. These are my own, from my own studies, from my own journey that I have learned, okay? So the third thing I want to teach you is that uh, we have, you know, our brain files and wires things neurosomatically in our body. I'm not going to get into the whole uh, neuroscience behind that and the neuroimmunology and the neuropsychology behind it. Um, you can, that's, that's a, a separate function. You can Google it if you want. However, Amy Cuddy did a TEDx talk where she talks about the different power poses and the benefit that you have. And one of, something simple that I do every morning when I get up even before I get out of bed, um, and I do it definitely once I get up, you know, and luckily it's just me, but I stand in front of that mirror and I hold, you know, the victory pose. The victory pose is where you're holding both fists up in the air. By just holding this pose two minutes in the air and you're standing, you know, like superwoman, superman, and you know, you see Olympic uh, Olympians when they win, they'll be running, they'll be going, yes, 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 yes. So do the yes, 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 and hold this position 
for two minutes. By holding this position for two minutes, it's scientifically proven. You will increase your testosterone level by over 80%. You will automatically get a natural testosterone boost just by holding this up. Gentlemen, if you suspect that you might have some low testosterone, why take a supplement? Why don't you just hold the victory pose for two minutes? Heck, if you're super ambitious, hold it for four minutes. But just two minutes increases your testosterone by 80%. Ladies, you need testosterone too. What does testosterone do for you men and women both? Well, testosterone, having an elevated level of testosterone in your body will increase your energy, it will increase your willpower, it will help increase your motivation. So if nothing else, just the increased level in energy should motivate you to do this every morning. So just remember, if you can't remember to do this, you know what, grab an eye pencil, a grease pencil, a lipstick, write it on the mirror on your bathroom where you go to brush your teeth every morning so that you'll see it and you'll go, oh, victory pose. Okay, I got to do that. The other thing is having your hands fan out like this also increases willpower. Dr. Cynthia Sue Larson, who is a physicist, she has multiple PhDs, you know, physics, MBA, divinity, yada, yada. So she talks about that and um, I don't remember which one of her books because I read um, all of her books. I think I've read all of her books, but she talks about how skipping, fanning your fingers out, doing the victory pose, and there's I think two or three others that she mentions, will increase your energy levels. That's it. I'm gonna wrap up today. Thank you for tuning in, tapping and turning on to Love and Money Secrets TV. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, if you would, if there's something in particular that you would like me to address, if you just, again, if you just have questions, um, let me know. And if, again, if you have not been affected by Go Love 20, let me know. I would love, absolutely adore to be the one to affect you with Go Love 20 and then even affect you with You Inspire Me, which is the mutation of Go Love 20. We have over 100,000 people who are affected globally by Go Love 20 as of a couple of days ago. I'm sure the numbers have, have swelled by, by, by then. I think it hasn't even been, I think it has been a week now. So anyhow, that's it. Thank you much. Ciao for now.